To help you along in your understanding of biology, uh, you do need to understand a bit about chemistry. We are, as you know, uh, made of atoms. And so to understand this, the structure of the atom is actually pretty important. Um, so this is going to be a very brief description of what the atom is like, what it's composed of, how a little bit on how it behaves and uh, comes together. There'll be another video about how atoms actually come together and bond. So take a look for that one if that's uh, actually what you're looking for. As you can see here, an atom is made of various parts. Um, in the very center right here is the nucleus. Now the nucleus of the atom, the nucleus, that contains nucleus, protons and neutrons. These, the, the general word for the things we're talking about um, are subatomic particles. Both of these would constitute, I'm going to write down, subatomic, I'm going to have to wedge in here, particles. Uh, particles, sorry, lost track. Okay, subatomic particles. They, all that means is below the level of the atom. They're smaller than the atom. Okay, and as you can see here, they've done the, the protons in blue. So there's a proton. Um, they've done the neutrons in red. There's a neutron. And they vary in numbers. Um, now, some things you should know about them is that protons carry a positive charge, usually just written as a plus sign. They are plus one in their charge. They are positive, so please remember that. Neutrons have zero charge. So I don't want to just write a zero, so I'm going to actually write zero charge. They are, as the name implies, neutral, neutron neutral. You can often remember positive with proton as well. Okay. These both have mass. So the mass of these equals one AMU is the term for it. So the mass of both. They're, they're roughly equal. They're equal enough that we can say they are equal. And AMU, uh, in the long run right now, you don't need to worry about it. It, st it stands for Atomic Mass Unit. Uh, it's a unit designed specifically for this so that we can understand uh, the mass of the protons and neutrons in relation to each other. Okay, so there in the center, and the nucleus is actually very, very tiny. This, this image here does not really depict the actual setup of an atom. Relative to the electrons out here, that nucleus would be very, very compact. Okay, and these electrons would be very distant. But that, you know, your chemistry teacher, when you go through that, uh, will go over what the actual structure of the atom. We just need a ballpark idea of this. So that's the center. Outside here, you see these rings. The rings don't actually exist, but they represent uh, what are called either orbitals. I've run out of room. Uh, we'll do that in pink. Orbitals. Or we could just refer to them as energy levels. We need to uh, have something to, to call the, that area. And so that would be these. So the, the reality is that many people picture uh, an atom sort of like our solar system with these electrons winging around here just like our planet going around the sun. Uh, but that's not actually the case. It's more like a cloud, and the, uh, the electrons that we're about to talk about, they're not actually um, fully particle in shape. There's a little bit of uh, wave property, but hey, let's, again, wait until chemistry class. But you do have out here structures called electrons. Okay? Electrons. And let's go through the same sort of information. The charge on the electron is negative. It's a negative charge. The mass on the electron, while technically not zero, is so small, it's about 1 1,800th of the mass of a proton, 
a neutron, that we just say that it has no mass. We say, relatively speaking, it's zero in, in its mass. Okay, so you can see the layout here of uh, what everything is. Let me just get rid of, uh, I'll get rid of my coloring of all this. Okay. And so we have our setup here. You have the, the nucleus right here in the center, and then the surrounding electrons all throughout here. Okay. One thing to recognize about the distribu distribution of the electrons in these energy levels. This first energy level, energy level one, uh, can actually only have, can only carry two electrons. If it fills that much, wow, that looks awful. That looks like 12 electrons. Let's start again without 12 electrons, huh? Okay. In energy level one, that's this circle right here. Uh, we'll do it this way. We'll, do, we'll color code that you can have two total electrons. Now you might have one, or you might have two, but if you have a third one, you're going to have to find a different place for it. And so then we can go to the next energy level, and that can carry as many as eight electrons. This, by the way, is a symbol for electron, a little E with a negative. And then beyond that, same thing. Now, technically speaking, when you get to the third and fourth and fifth, it doesn't actually carry eight electrons. But for reasons I'm not going to get into right now, we can go ahead and say that there, are, there is a capacity to hold eight electrons there. So that's just something to keep in mind here. Okay, so now the next thing is how many of these do you actually have? If you go to what's called the periodic table of elements, uh, you can actually, you'll, you'll find a whole table of boxes like this. It's all the elements, that is all the uh, smallest individual components of matter. Um, and here is the element sodium. And, and one of these boxes will actually, it'll have the name and the symbol. Symbols are often one or two letters. And then it has uh, probably some other information, but I picked a simple one here. It has two numbers. One of them is the atomic number. Atomic number and the other one is called the atomic mass. Now you could probably guess what that is. It, it is the relative mass of the atom. Actually not the relative mass. Uh, yeah, actually relative mass of the atom. Um, depending on the units. It's given in atomic mass units. So you're faced with a decision that you have to decide which one is which? Which of these is the atomic number and which is the atomic mass? I will tell you, the atomic number is always the smaller number. I know technically I should say lesser number. I'm going to say smaller number. Okay? And so that's this one. So in this particular case, it is 11. The atomic number of sodium is 11. The atomic mass is the greater value. And that's that one. Okay, so you have to remember that. There are, some of this you do have to commit to memory. Um, but there are also ways to, to figure things out if you remember parts. The atomic number is also called the proton number. So that tells you something. It tells you how many protons there are. So in this particular case, because the atomic number of sodium is 11, we know there are 11 protons, right? So that's some information. Another aspect of atoms that we should touch on is that they are elect electrically neutral. An atom itself has no charge. Now, if you use your logic and reasoning here, we just said that an atom has 11 positively charged particles. If the total charge is neutral, how many electrons, electrons, which are negative, must it have? It has to balance out, and so there must be 11 electrons. So now you can figure out how many protons and electrons relatively easy. Just figure out what the atomic number is, and that will give you the number of protons and electrons. 
Mass, atomic mass, takes a little bit of calculating. And when I say a little bit of calculating, I really mean a little bit. Um, so it, it's kind of a funky number. And again, I don't really want to get into why this has decimals. So we're just going to round. We're going to say that the mass is 23. Now what the atomic mass is, that equals the mass of the protons plus the mass of the neutrons. And since protons have a mass of 1 and neutrons have a mass of 1, it becomes a very easy calculation. So 23 is my atomic mass. That equals the mass of my protons. And I've already figured out that I have 11 protons. And so they are carrying a mass of 11 plus the mass of my neutrons which I'm just going to put an N there. And so we can do just a little calculating. Subtract 11, subtract 11, and I find that N equals 12. That means I have 12 neutrons. So you might have to do a little bit of calculating like that to figure out uh, your number of neutrons. Okay, But that gives you a sense of what the atom is. Um, and the structure of it overall. So you should understand what we have here. If you don't, please come to me, review your textbook, uh, look for other tutorials, review this again, write down some notes and questions to help you out here. But that gives you the layout of the atom and we can build on that and learn about chemical bonds, which we'll do in another video. All right, I will see you later.